it's every drummer's dream to have their own signature snare drum. So the fact that I have this in my name is not lost on me at all. I'm incredibly grateful. And to have a signature snare drum with a company like Pearl Drums, who has had so many iconic signature snare drums from some of the best drummers in the world, it's something that it, like I have to kind of pinch myself when I talk about it. It's pretty unbelievable. It had to be loud. It had to be able to cut through some pretty intense, heavy music that is very layered and very syncopated. Uh, and not just the loud hits. Uh, it had to be super responsive because in our music with, with Periphery, I play a lot of ghost notes, a lot of smaller accents, different variations and, and different dynamics. And each one had to cut. So it had to have the sensitivity as well as the attack, the sort of wide sound, as well as like the very direct punchy sound that just hits you right in the face with it, basically. In a live setting, we play anything from smaller clubs to you know larger theaters, and we've played in arenas, and we played outside gigs. And then when you're in a studio, it can always change too. So I wanted a drum that was versatile in that sense that would allow all of those sort of sounds and qualities that I just talked about to still shine through no matter where we were. Suffice it to say, it was a big uh, a big set of, of goals that we set out and I was actually pretty, pretty amazed that we were able to accomplish the task of creating what I believe to be an extremely versatile drum that does work in all of those settings. So as many times as I have played all sorts of different snare drum makes, so you know, different types of wood, different types of metal, I always gravitate back towards brass. There's something about that sound that I think accomplishes a lot of the, the goals that we set out to, to achieve with this particular snare drum in terms of the sound. I think brass by itself just lends itself to being pretty loud, uh, very, a lot of attack. It, it is wide. It does have a lot of body and a lot of presence. It does respond uh, to sensitive dynamics very well. So by using brass, we were actually able to kind of set up a foundation that would allow us to achieve those lofty goals that I had for this drum uh, pretty well. It set us up in a good space. And that's not to say that other types of metal for drums or other types of wood for drums wouldn't have amazing sounds. It just was very particular as far as what I was looking for. And in my experience playing different types of drums, instantly knew that brass would be the way to go. And just as an aside, we did, um, I, I did sort of appease some of the, the people that we were all working together to, to develop this drum, to just try out some of the specs with different metals and hands down every time, you know, the brass won. And we kind of just did that as a fail safe to make sure that, you know, maybe something that I didn't expect would be better uh, suited for it, you know, is out there. Nothing was in terms of my preference, what we were going for. And um, yeah, we landed on brass and I'm very happy with that. I don't like very short drums. Uh, you know, they, they don't have enough body for what I was looking for in terms of sound. And I tend to find that uh, deeper drums, even as deep as, or, or, or you know, not as deep as 6.5 uh, as opposed to 6, they sound fantastic, but I tend to have just personal issues with the height and getting them to sit in a place that feels comfortable in relation to the snare stands that I use and fitting them in between the pedals. So it was sort of a logistic thing uh, when we developed it as a 14 by six because it gives me an extra half inch to work with in terms of getting the height perfectly uh, for how I wanna play the drum. I tend to, to actually sit my snare drum very low um, and I tend to actually, you know, when I'm playing my rim shots, I fall right on my leg. So I really actually like to have a drum that sits low and if you have a drum that's too deep, you can only get it so low. And with a six uh, by 14, again, that half inch allows me to get it right to where it feels comfortable without having to do a bunch of gymnastics with the snare stand to fit around the double bass pedals. The other reason that we chose 14 uh, by six uh, is from a sound perspective. I have just always liked that depth. I think that 
The response that I want is it's sort of right in the middle between something that has kind of too much depth versus something that has the right amount of attack. And it's just been a sweet spot for, for my personal preference. And then lastly, it's not a size that you see very often. Uh, there's a lot of drums that are 14 by 6.5. There's a lot of drums that are 14 by 5. Uh, but 14 by 6 is not typically seen. And I thought it would be really cool to try to also fit something into the, the product offering with Pearl uh, in, by way of a signature drum that was a 14 by 6 because it, it does stand out a little bit and it's a little bit different from, from the rest of the pack. I chose die cast hoops for my signature snare drum because of the sound and the feel. Um, again, I was looking for a lot of attack, a lot of power with this drum. It needed to cut through, as I mentioned, this you know wall of sound that is the music in in periphery, and the die cast hoops just really help with that. It allows me to hit really, really hard and get a response beyond just the shell of the drum and beyond just the, the, the drum head itself. The die cast tubes really do help with the resonance. They help with the, the attack, the feel. It was just kind of one of those things I knew that I wanted. It, it, it wasn't even a question as to like, oh, what, what hoop should we use? Having a lot of experience uh, playing a lot of drums and sampling a lot of drums, I just knew that I would get the results that I wanted with Diecast. The drum head combination was pretty much set from the beginning. I knew what I wanted and there was not a lot of experimentation with this particular combo. Let's start with the top head. The Evans Heavyweight Dry was actually a drum head that I helped develop with Evans drum heads. I had been using the regular Heavyweight for a long time. Really liked it, um, but I I really had to use quite a bit more muffling on previous snare drums than I'd like to use because of just how much sort of resonance there was to that head in general. So I went to Evans and I and I said, hey, I love the heavyweight. It's it can withstand a whole tour basically of me beating the crap out of it. Um, but I would like to control the sound a bit more. What if we put you know, some of the venting into the head like, or, you know, on like the ST dry or, or a head like that onto the, the heavyweight. And uh, they liked the idea. We tried it out. They sent me some prototypes and I started playing with it. And then instantly I knew like, this is, this is my snare batter head. This is, this has to be the one that I go to. And we, we were developing this particular signature snare drum because brass is so vibrant and, and so um, resonant, having a little bit built-in control to the drum head helps to sort of get it to that really nice middle ground of just enough resonance, but also just enough control too, with the ability to withstand heavy hitters like me who are using big sticks and, you know, hitting really hard. And then as far as the Hazy 300 on the bottom, that's just been my go-to resonant head uh, since I started playing. And it's something I feel really comfortable with. I know how to tune it quickly. Um, it can withstand, you know, the way that I play. It does sound good as far as the response to the snare wires. Uh, so even with that one, I just, I knew that's what I wanted to go for. And uh, the combo has definitely been a winning one at that with this snare drum. The venting uh, holes around the shell just really help to create more airflow. Um, and again, using brass, if you use a solid brass shell, you're gonna get a lot of tone. That's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of tone is great. Um, but again, I wasn't necessarily going for a drum that was, you know, overly vibrant with, you know, a lot of overtones. I wanted the quick sort of punch of that tone, but then I wanted it to be kind of go away very quickly. So you hear it and it's gone. And that again is, is sort of a nice compliment to the music that I play because it needs to be there and then it needs to get out. There's so many notes that, that I play in periphery that I have to have basically the snare reset and ready to go between every hit. The venting system, for so to speak, allows for that to happen. And it works really well with the different dynamics that I play, whether it's a rim shot and I get a lot of that uh, sort of resonance and it goes away quick, or whether it's a ghost note. It just is a very controlled snare drum in that way. And the way that the vents are positioned around the circumference, sort of evenly spaced, it 
allows the airflow to kind of move where it needs to go based on where my right hand's hitting, based on where my left hand's hitting. Um, and it's not just one vent in one direction. It The goal is to hopefully have it evenly dispersed as I hit it, which will help the sound be a lot more balanced and a lot more round in a nice way that I want it to be. I chose the SR150 click lock strainer just because of its ease of use. Uh, you know, it's funny, with periphery, I typically don't throw um, the snares off. I don't think there's any live songs or any songs we've recorded where I've actually taken the snares off and I just use the drum without the snares. Um, so I really just wanted something that more than anything was really easy to change the tension and the sensitivity of the snare wires. I typically, uh, as I said, will leave the snares on all the time, but depending on the song, depending on the style, depending on the room I'm in, I really do like to change the tightness of the snare wires. And I think that for me, in my experience with this strainer, it's one of the fastest ones to dial that in. You don't have to think about it. It's very easy to use if you want the snare drum uh, the snare's off, you simply just flick it once and it's very easy to, to get it clicked off. If you want them turned on, you just pop it on and it clicks into place and it's locked in there and you're not gonna have any slippage in terms of that snare wire popping off like can happen on some different strainers that I've used in the past. So it's a reliable one and again, it allows me to address the sensitivity of the drum very quickly uh, without much work and it's very easy to use. For this drum, I knew that I wanted to do black as the main color, um, and I knew I wanted to do the yellow accents. Uh, I, I just, I love the way that the two colors, you know, sort of work together. The yellow really pops, those little subtle hints of it. Um, and it just helps to separate it again from the pack. Um, it is actually a personal sort of preference of mine. I think it's just a really cool looking drum. And my hope was that, uh, you know, the, the black shell, would be striking from a matte perspective. It looks really good in different lighting. Um, you know, I just, I just really, I don't know. I dig it. That's that's sort of where that came from. Obviously, the colors don't really affect the sound. So this was just simply an aesthetic piece that I wanted to try out. Luckily, it worked. We did try a couple different variations of of colors with like the lugs themselves. We tried variations of colors with the diecast hoops. But once we got the black diecast hoops on here, once we got the you know the lugs set the way that they were it just worked really well. And uh, I think everybody all at once who's been, who, who was working on the snare drum, when we saw this particular iteration, everybody gave it a, a unanimous thumbs up. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a really cool color. It's edgy, it's fun. And I think it represents the sound very well. The, the, the look and the sound, I think match nicely. And, uh, and that's something that you want. You want cohesiveness. And I think this, this snare drum has that. So if you would like to get your own signature snare drum from yours truly, uh, hit up one of the sales engineers here at Sweetwater. If you work with one already, they'll be able to tell you everything you need to know about this drum. Uh, or you can go to sweetwater.com and uh, go grab your own. I promise you, you will not be disappointed.